Okay, this video is about using videos for instruction in the classroom or flip education, uh, flipped classrooms is another name for them. Right? Where did the, I get the idea? I got this from. It's been around for a while, but I got the idea. I started seeing it uh, when I started looking at this website, uh, the Khan, Acad uh, Khan Academy. It's a, a famous website uh, in America now. Many people are using it. Um, and basically, the person, uh, Sal Khan, started tutoring his niece who was living in another city and he was looking for a way how could he tutor her in math and so he started making videos and putting them online and what uh, people started to find out they emailed him back and said that they loved his videos and they were using them in their classrooms students were using them uh, to learn but also teachers were using them in their classroom so if you visit the Khan Academy website what you'll see a lot of is uh, uh, an example of what you would see here. Each one of these um, is a link to another video on mathematics and uh, that's basically Khan's specialty is uh, math and maybe science, right? But uh, that's his main focus. And as you can see, you could basically almost take a whole math course off of his website. Uh, but it got me thinking about uh, what could I do for my class in humanities because he doesn't have very many very many humanities uh, subject videos for himself on his website so what could I do so this is what it would look like right basically I upload a video uh, from a maybe a PowerPoint this is a PowerPoint that I've made I've uploaded uh, a video to YouTube of a lecture Right, so basically what we're talking about is giving a lecture uh, that the students watch at home and then they do the instruction uh, or the homework that you would have given them to do at home, they do that in the classroom. And you can look at this, uh, uh, this video as basically uh, like what you would write on a whiteboard. Right? So this would be the notes that the students take. This is uh, a PowerPoint and then maybe some notes that you would write on the whiteboard and the students would take this. Right? This is what you would normally deliver in the classroom. So how could you use it? Right? Uh, there's several different ways. There's unlimited ways that you could use these videos. First way is uh, students could have a computer or a cell phone for that matter, a smartphone, uh, any tablet, anything that they could watch a video on, right? And the students could then watch that video in class. You assign it, you tell them, okay, I want you to watch this video. And then they watch the video. When they feel that they've uh, understood or mastered the content, then they would go off and start some type of uh, project or task or uh, some type of homework that you might give at home, but they're doing it in class. Why is this important, right? Well, it gives you time as a teacher to sit with the students that need help, right? Uh, so you can help the students that would uh, struggle maybe with uh, their homework at home, but you're there available to help them. The other way would uh, be a little bit different but very similar is uh, students watch it at home. right? So again, they're watching the content that you would give them normally in class at home, take notes possibly, uh, and then they come prepared for the next class for discussion, for uh, practice, for an experiment. It depends on what, what you want to do. Another good use of this would be for revision, right? So if you have all these videos up on YouTube, uh, the students can then go back whenever they feel they need to and revise, right? Or at the end, for example, in Form 5 or four, Form 6, students can go back and at the time of the exams, they have a whole course of information and they can, that they can pick and choose from what they need to rev uh, revise for. And finally, similar to uh, maybe Khan Academy, uh, but having a bank of various skills for the students, right? And possibly for parents, right? How many times have you sat down in a parent-teacher conference and a parent has said, I have no idea what you're teaching in class? Well, here's what you do. You tell them, go to these videos. It tells you everything that we're learning in class, right? So parents can watch these with their students. They can watch them on their own if they want, right? And they can learn. 
but a bank of skills that the students could access when they need it, right? Uh, so maybe not specific content, but this would be school-wide bank of uh, information that's uh, directed for our school, right? So these are just uh, a few of the ways that they could be used. Others could be uh, you could record exemplars and uh, there's no other reason why um, students couldn't also uh, do the work themselves. right? But again, here's a, another example. Watching a video at home about what it means to compare and contrast. They come ready in class to then work on that. Maybe you assign a, a Venn diagram or write a paragraph comparing and contrasting something right uh, another thing for science possibly would be to uh, if you're short on time you demonstrate the experiment on the video so again you could use uh, a video camera record yourself doing an experiment students watch it at home uh, they you show them the equipment that they're going to need they step into the classroom uh, ready to do the experiment rather than you having to waste that time explaining all that stuff and then again, uh, using it as an exemplar, right? So looking at uh, de deconstructing an essay, a presentation, uh, showing the students what a good piece of work should look like. So here is a, a, a chart from a book that's in our library called Flip Your Classroom, right? On the left is a traditional classroom, and you might note, right, uh, number one, these people have extreme amount of time in a classroom, uh, which we are not uh, lucky to have, right? But 20 minutes going over the previous night's homework, right? So the students that didn't have any uh, idea of what they were supposed to be doing, they didn't do their homework, right? You're spending an awful lot of time uh, just going over that homework. An awful lot of time going over content, and then a small portion of the time is left for practice, right? Using the skills that they should be learning. And this is not the best way to do it, right? If you look over here on the other side, we have uh, the flipped classroom, right? So what we're talking about. Watch a video at home. They come in. Maybe you spend 10 minutes on questions. What didn't you understand from the video? What questions do you want to discuss? So they spend 10 minutes on that. And then the majority of the class then you see is uh, on independent or practice, independent work or practice, possibly if you're in science, a lab activity, discussion, however you want to spend that time uh, using the content rather than just delivering the content, right? So here is uh, the major difference, right? Spending the time on uh, practice rather than delivering content. Uh, and that's the major difference of a flipped classroom, right? So getting back to a big idea, right? My big idea of an idea bank. So saving these big ideas somewhere so that the students can then uh, go back and access them when they need them, right? Draw it out, withdraw this information like an ATM when they need it. It's always available uh, for them, right? And what could this look like? What could you have on in a bank? Well, you could start with basic IB skills, right? You could talk about ATL skills like transfer, reflect, uh, what it means to re uh, reflect, information, te uh, uh, information technology. Um, so many times your parents will ask, what does this mean? Or students don't understand. But if you have a simple video that explains it, right, it helps them understand. If you say you need to look work on transfer or you need to reflect more, but these students don't understand what it means, they can uh, have some place to go first to look. If they still don't understand, then they can find you as a teacher. Uh, command terms, right? Command terms that are th used throughout the IB, uh, not just in maybe humanities in my area, right? What does it mean to argue? What does it mean to think, right? Uh, so command terms that you could use. And then basic skills, right, uh, that everybody could use. What is a bibliography and what should a bibliography look like, right? How do you take notes? Uh, uh, how do you develop a research question, right? So basic skills that anybody in the school could use. And then we could get into more specific ones like Maybe how do you show your work in a math problem? What does that mean? Or uh, uh, any other skill that you want to 
identify that the students need. And then they're able to access this whenever they, mean, uh, whenever they need it. So why is this good, right? Most of all, it saves time in the classroom, right? That's the big one. Instead of assigning a lecture uh, you, uh, to take notes in a classroom, they do it at home for homework, and then they come in, and you, as a teacher, can sit by them and help them in their guided practice, right? Or critical thinking, working on critical thinking, or uh, working in groups on projects, right? Another good thing, students can pace themselves, right? So they're really working on mastery um, rather than just getting by, right? So a student, instead of uh, sitting in your lecture and only understanding 5, 10, 15 percent of the lecture, they can stop this video, right? You at any time could pause this video, rewind, if you didn't understand and go back over what you need to, right? You could watch it two, three, four, five times until you master whatever the skill is that we're trying to get across, right? So as they're taking notes, they can pause it, write down as much as they want, unpause it, and go on, right? So they pace themselves. Uh, again, reviewing for assessments. If you have a unit assessment, students can go back and then review what content was important or if they're in form 5, form 6 they could have a full course of material that they could go back and review but basically it's good because it's a tool it's one of any tools that we can use as a teacher uh, but it's how you use it right that's uh, that's good what's bad about it of course there's always going to be bad right kids number one kids are kids even though this is new and exciting, it's using YouTube where we should be connecting with the kids. It's still homework, and every class is going to have a kid that doesn't do their homework, right? So you have to make them accountable. Simplest way is to say, look, I want you to take notes, and tomorrow in class you're going to have to show me your notes. And as a teacher, you spend five uh, minutes, four minutes walking around the classroom making check marks, did you take your notes or not? Or you have a question. Uh, maybe your warm-up warm activity is based on the lecture so you can tell who actually watched the homework video and who did not, right? Uh, another bad thing is, of course, everything has a learning curve. So making a video uh, is an experiment. You might have to experiment with different styles, how you want to be in it. I could put myself in this video I could show you uh, what I look like, but you probably don't want to look at me. I don't want to see uh, see myself. I would distract myself, so I prefer not to have that. You could uh, videotape uh, scientific experiments and then add them in later with editing, right? I don't normally edit my videos, but you could if you want. But you're going to have to figure out which is the best way for you, right? Um, and that takes some time. So basics of what you need to to make it right you're gonna need some type of uh, recording uh, device quick time there's tons of different free uh, online uh, devices that you can use um, but I use a Mac uh, I use uh, I've bought a program called screenium uh, that you can pay for uh, but if you own a Mac you can use uh, free quick time it does the same thing um, my screenium gives me a few more bells and whistles, but you can you can start with QuickTime or any free online uh, Windows-based uh, uh, capturing device, screen capturing uh, program, and it'll work. Right? Every time that you see me write, I'm writing on a device like this. It's a, a pad called a Bamboo from Wycom. Uh, there are many different price ranges. I have a mid mid range one. It cost me about five hundred dollars three years ago and it's still brand basically brand new. Uh, so you can use it for years and years and years. You could buy a really expensive one wireless but it depends on what you want to do. Uh, um, you could even not use one. right? You could just type or just talk but I think using a pen and being able to highlight, write words, take notes if you had a picture and you wanted to highlight uh, specific parts of a, of a image 
if you're in visual arts, uh, you know, uh, talking about uh, different themes and highlighting images, um, or if you're highlighting an essay or something like that, deconstructing an essay in language arts, then uh, I think the pin is pretty powerful. Uh, and also, you're, if you have a pin, if you're going to use a, a pad, you're going to need some type of uh, basically smart board uh, um, program, like Prometheum uh, is what I believe our school uses, but you could also download a free one called Sancor. It's through the uh, French government. They make it free, open source, um, uh, smart board technology that you can use, and that's what I use. Actually, it's free. So basically, all I had to, uh, my total investment would have been for this board here, $500. That's pretty cheap. Um, that's the basics of what you need to get started. Now, you could add on, you could add a video camera, you could edit your uh, material in uh, some type of edit editing program, but this is the basics of what you need. Key reminders of what you need to do uh, to make a good video, right? Keep it short and focused, right? You don't want to uh, be long-winded, tell jokes, because uh, you're going to bore the kids just like you did in um, class in your lecture, right? Plus, YouTube, um, I find, is basically restricted to about, you know, 10 to 15 minute videos, which is good, because that's probably about the attention span of most students, if not teachers, right? Uh, we all have short attention spans. Think ahead, right? If you assign uh, independent work, some students are going to breeze through the work. So your uh, gifted students, you're going to want to have something on hand uh, or an idea of a project. How are you going to stretch them? So you need to prepare ahead, think ahead of what you're going to do. Always have something else to do. Students need incentives, right? Just because you assign to watch a video doesn't mean that they're going to they need to know that they're going to be held accountable for watching it. Show their notes, a quiz, um, uh, participation points, however you want to tell them that they're accountable, but they're going to have to be uh, uh, accountable. They need an incentive to watch it. Um, and then just remember that this is a tool, right? This is a tool shaped and limited only by your imagination. So you can do with it whatever you want. That's up to you. So. If you have questions, there's other resources. I will put uh, my lecture notes uh, with links to different videos that I've made uh, that you can see different ways that you can use them, uh, different resources for the Khan Academy, uh, videos about that. Um, and the book is in the library called Flip Your Classroom. It's a good resource for starters, people starting just to make their videos. Um, or come and find me, and I, I can help you to talk to you about how to make a video.